Dr. Yogananda, and with him also his team member Sudhakar Reddy ji, and uh, another, I believe, an engineer is there with him. So the three of them are here with us today, and they are part of a, a team called Brinmai Consultants. Uh, it is a material testing laboratory uh, which was established way back in 1987, and I believe it. Uh, one of the first constructions that they began with was uh, Yogananda ji's residence himself, uh, which used stabilized mud blocks. And uh, at that time, this was a very new thing in the construction industry. And I believe by setting an example, he generated a lot of interest. And so, therefore, in 1988, they set up Rinmai Consultants. Uh, the Mrinmai testing lab made its beginning by getting involved in testing various kinds of soils and arriving at the correct mix uh, design to produce good quality SMBs, which is stabilized mud blocks, with the required wet compressive strength and durability. The research and development work carried out at Astra and the Department of Civil Engineering, Indian Institute of Science, uh, Bangalore has been led by Professor K. S. Jagdish, and that has been the foundation for all the activities of Mrinmai. Um, I only recently found out about their work, which I think is is so pioneering, because I was told that uh, if anyone anywhere has an interest or would like to build their own homes, or you know, if architects would like to build with soil. Uh, they can actually send their soil samples to the Mrinmai team uh, who will do the testing uh, for us and then come back to us with their learnings and their findings. So I was able to send about 30 kgs of uh, the Shadu Mati last year after the collection to Yoganandaji and Sudhakarji. And uh, every, every few weeks, I'd say, oh, my gosh, they've forgotten about us. And, you know, is this happening or not? But then I discovered that they did many, 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 many tests. And it was a very challenging thing. But I believe they have discovered uh, a lot. So I'm very, I'm very happy to have you here, sir. And I'm really looking forward. Yoganandaji is going to talk to us about the process of um, making adobe uh, blocks. And uh, it's it's just perfect because after his conversation, we will hear from Dhruvang and Priyanka, who are based in Pune, as well as Vaibhavi Agarwal, who have both tried to also work with uh, uh, making construction blocks out of this material. And I do hope that you can stay with us for those presentations also, sir, so we can have your feedback on their uh, work also. So sure. with, I'll stop sharing the screen now and pass it over to you. If you'd like to share from your end, yeah. Uh, please go ahead and share the screen. Yeah. Okay. Is it visible? Yes. And you can do a full screen also. Okay. Full screen. Am I audible? Uh, yes. It could be a little louder. Okay. Sure. I can be louder. No problem. Uh, yes. May I know uh, who's speaking? Yeah. I'll be speaking. Sudhakar is also there. Pramod is okay. also there, my colleagues. Uh, okay. Okay. So depending on the situation, they will also respond. Yeah, please, sure. Please yeah. welcome. Yeah. So, yeah, thank you uh, for inviting us. Uh, it is nice to be a part of this uh, process in terms of understanding uh, how to reuse the clay. Uh, what I would like to probably begin with is some kind of an introduction on... Uh, what we are trying to do and why we are trying to do this. Uh, we are trying to look at uh, stabilized mud for load-bearing masonry. See, load-bearing masonry buildings uh, need revival now because many of the structures what you see are becoming frame structures like reinforced concrete or steel or any such thing which consumes a lot of embodied energy. So load-bearing masonry uh, irrespective of any material being used in uh, buildings, will reduce this embodied energy to almost 50% of what otherwise happens in the construction line. So I will just uh, continue with some uh, understanding of uh, mud block or stabilized mud construction techniques. One is one can use uh, a manual machine or a mechanized press to produce stabilized mud block. 
one can use another technique called rammed earth technique then one can use uh, adobe technique or cob technique depending on the situation then mud concrete is another uh, excellent example how we can recycle demolished waste building demolished waste when I mean, recycle it but i would like to now look at stabilized adobe uh, today and try to give some information on how stabilized adobe is done and then move forward to how we can utilize the clay what you have sent what we have done so generally for stabilized mud construction the materials used or soil mainly locally available soil is what we try to say then sand or quarry dust depending on the requirement and sand like materials if any other local material is available which is similar to sand that can also be used generally cement and lime are used as stabilizers water and industrial waste depending on what kind of industries are there locally sometimes fly ash if it is available granite finds from polishing and uh, cutting uh, industries then if you have foundry then foundry return sand tons of sand from foundry becoming a waste can be utilized here then construction and demolition waste all of them can be utilized for stabilized mud construction in general but it is good to understand what is soil soil is uh, you know like clay is uh, something which we normally talk about which gives the behavior for the soil depending on the kind of clay mineral present and also the uh, clay uh, when we talk about the particle size is very very fine it's like less than 2 microns between sand and clay silt comes into picture which is less than 75 microns and above 2 microns in size above 75 microns is sand like material so that is the soil in general for us in terms of physical properties then uh, we move forward two types of soil is available one is expansive soil another one is non expansive soil so most of the cases we deal with non expansive soil because it is easier to handle this less problematic but when we try to look at expansive soils that is something which we need to look at a little differently that i will explain uh, however it is good to understand there are acidic soils also where ph is less than 7 wherein we need more of uh, lime in terms of stabilizer with cement so that is something which uh, you know it is good to know how to handle acidic soils then expansive soils like the one uh, you are talking about the uh, clay sludge bentonite it is also expansive so wherein we need lime and cement combination with lot of sand addition sand means sand like material not necessarily the river sand it can be a manufactured sand quarry dust any other sand like material coming from mine waste uh, any of them returns so all that is possible foundry waste uh, one thing which we generally say is uh, avoid organic soils where soils have more organic matter which is mostly top soil it is good for agricultural activity not good for construction it doesn't you can't stabilize it properly with any of the stabilizers like cement and lime so generally we try to say it is a very valuable soil if it has organic matter just avoid it and use it where it is more useful so going forward uh, just to give you an idea of how the stabilized adobe is made generally the dry mixing happens with the soil sand like material and stabilizers we add uh, water in the form of lime slurry that is something which is required the moisture should be good enough to have a good pugging process because this is very critical mixing is the most critical part of the whole process the pugging activity should be such that you get a very homogeneous mix after that and then you can choose the mold sizes and uh, the type of mold you can fill the mold properly without any air gaps and then you can take it out and demold it immediately that is what uh, is happening here 
you can demold it. This is a modified, improved mold what we have for stabilized Adobe making, wherein it has a bottom plate also. So you get a very good shape of the block and demolding is easier. Once it is demolded, you leave it for a day and then you stack it for curing. That is how it happens. Wherever you put lime and cement, you need to cure it for 28 days. Curing can be done by just sprinkling water once you stack it like this. And then uh, some examples of stabilized Adobe construction. This was done uh, almost 14 years back. Uh, two storage stabilized Adobe residence. Uh, any number of floors can be done. It is a question of design mix. Like we have uh, uh, mixed design in concrete, we can do a mixed design for stabilized Adobe and uh, you know build depending on the proposed uh, construction. This is a community center outskirts of Bengaluru. Then you have some more examples. It is a residence in uh, Gudlur, Tamil Nadu. It rains very, very heavily. So it's all exposed masonry using stabilized Adobe method using the local soil. This is in Coimbatore. Even a roof, you know, it is constructed out of stabilized Adobe. It's called a masonry vault. So that is also being done. A meditation center in Hassan, Karnataka. That is also being done. A pyramid has been built with stabilized Adobe. Then in Gujarat, it's again a part of TVS industry, Flow Metallic. So in their admin building is being done with stabilized Adobe, produced with the local soil, produced locally. So the whole idea has been to look at how best to utilize the local resources and local artisans and then train them to build this. With this background, I will move on to the kind of sample what we got. So you call it uh, clay sludge. So from there, this highly clay soil we got. So we tried to do some tests. This is the sample received at the laboratory. Very hard because it is in the dry state. See, the thing is, it can absorb a lot of water and it can swell a lot. And when it dries, it shrinks and becomes very hard. So processing is a little tricky. You can see the next slide which shows we need to break it using a hammer because it is so hard. So once we break them and processing it to smaller size, next uh, yeah, slide shows. So we processed it to smaller size and then we had to put a lot of water so that you know it uh, softens. The basic properties of the clay sludge sample is sand content, 5% need not mean sand actually. It is more or less whichever, uh, whatever material we got above 75 microns. Normally it is called sand content, but in this particular case, not much of sand we could find out. But silt and clay together was about 95%. Uh, we have not yet determined the silt and clay percentage. We need to do another analysis for that. But that's not something which is very important at present. The pH of the soil sample was 7.1. So these are some basic parameters. And then we try to look at having test specimens. What do we uh, do if we want to use it in construction? So clay sludge sample, then you have stabilizers, lime and cement, and then manufactured sand is what we have used here. The mixed proportion after a number of experiments wherein we arrived at the right kind of mixed proportion to achieve the minimum wet strength of 3.5 MPa. That's the standard uh, on Indian standard code. So to achieve that, we had to do repeatedly uh, quite a few experiments and then come up with this mixed proportion wherein we use uh, one part of uh, this clay soil or clay sludge to five parts of manufactured sand or quarry dust or any sand-like material by weight. It's all by weight batching. Then the stabilizer used here has been 12% cement and 5% lime by weight of the modified soil. That is 1 plus 5. Then the process, this is a mixed proportion, the process of making stabilized adobe, how we have to use it to make specimens in terms of stabilized adobe brick. The dry clay soil, that is the sludge, should be processed, broken into small pieces, less than 20 mm. 
then one part of the clay is soiled to four parts of sand or quarry dust can be mixed with 0.3 parts of slaked lime or calcium hydroxide by weight and thoroughly mixed with sufficient water, about 20% or more, to achieve a homogeneous mix. This is the critical part of it because you need to wet the clay. It has to soften. Only then it is available for mixing. So mixing is the most critical part of it. That's where we call it pugging. That is the something which has to be done very well using lime, uh, clay soil, and manufactured sand. Once that is done, the third step comes wherein we mix one part of manufactured sand and 0.7 part of Portland cement by weight. This gets mixed easily because cement, uh, you can mix it easily with sand. That is added to the mix in step two and pugged to achieve a workable mix. Once you do that pugging activity, the mix is ready to be filled into the mold. That's when we use a mold this is just to show we need to weigh batch it. Then the stabilized adobe mold, you can make of uh, different sizes. You can manufacture the mold with a bottom plate. This mix, what is prepared, should be filled properly into it so that air gaps are not there. This is the stabilized adobe brick sample which was made using that mold. The size of this is uh, like... Uh, nine inches by four and a quarter by three and a half inches. Uh, this is the method of curing. We put normally wet burlap and cure it. You don't need much of water. Make sure that the bricks do not dry. That's all. So you just sprinkle water, cover it with the hay or gunny bag, keep it wet. Uh, then what do we do later? We need to look at what is the strength of the brick. That is wet strength of the brick. The process of understanding the uh, wet strength is to immerse that brick in water for 72 hours, that is three days, and then take it to a testing machine and load it to failure. So that is expressed as MPR, megapascals or newtons per millimeter square. The wet compressor strength, what we got with this mix proportion was 3.56 MPA for 28 days cured specimen which satisfies the uh, Bureau of uh, Indian Standards Code uh, requirement to be used as a construction uh, uh, element in the uh, activity. The moisture content is around 14.7%, which is very well within the durability characteristics. And we, we could, see anybody who sees the specimen can feel the durability is excellent because the edges are very sharp. It doesn't erode. Even if you keep it for in water for a number of days, nothing happens to it. It is very stable in presence of moisture. So all the properties which we look for as a masonry unit is available here. It is possible to use it. But this is the technical feasibility part of it. Since we got the sample for testing, we have done the technical feasibility of using this clay sludge uh, with the stabilizers in construction and achieve the required strength. Uh, but one thing which comes to my mind when we talk about clay, we should first look at, is there any other use for this clay? If there is no other value for this clay in any other requirement, only then we can probably look at using it for construction. I think it, it's important to look at uh, any of these possibilities, like you mentioned, recycling that clay to make an idol, that is also something one can try. But uh, if there is no other easy solution or this also is something which one is looking for, then technically it is feasible. We can use it with a lot of sand-like material and stabilizers. I would probably stop it at this and... Uh, if there are any questions, maybe we can take it. Thank you, Yoganandaji. Ji. Uh, I think questions will come. Yeah, uh, it's fine. Uh, so, <clears throat> one thing is, I do you have any comment on uh, the trials that Anujna is doing with the pond liners? Yeah, yeah. Bentonite uh, clay is definitely used for pond liners. Uh, to fill the pores and make a liner. I think that's also something which is good. 
so it can find uh, a role in uh, those activities also. And most of the foundry, uh, you, you all you also mentioned it, you know, they use bentonite with sand for doing all the castings. In fact, we have been involved with a TVS uh, group of uh, companies, uh, TVS foundry division, wherein uh, for the last uh, more than three decades, they are taking our help to utilize that waste. Tons of waste comes out of this foundry and they are using it for their own buildings, admin blocks, kitchen, school, dining, because after they use it in foundry, it's called return sand. They are not able to recycle it back into the foundry activity. So that return sand we have been able to use in their construction activity. So Bentonite finds uh, many uses like that. That's why I said, if there are no other uses, then we will help. The technical feasibility is there, but I'm not too sure if this is the best way to use that clip. That's all. You're not convinced that making construction blocks is the best thing to do? No, I would always look at, uh, we are generating a lot of waste. Look at thermal power plants. Look at aluminum factories, foundry. Uh, look at building and demolition waste. Uh, look at the mines where we have generated so much of waste. All that can definitely become a part of our resources in construction field. Uh, I would uh, definitely look at uh, clay. Uh, probably, you know, one can utilize it in a better way. Uh, you know, that is something which probably, you know, one has to look at. Uh, one has to probably look at interacting with farming community and see how, whether they can utilize it because it holds moisture. So several benefits are there. For example, black cotton soils. Why do we call it as black cotton soils? All the cotton growing area, you have this expansive clay also. So, you know, geotechnical people also try to talk about uh, bentonite and how effectively they can uh, build earthen dams so there are many uses for it. That is the reason why I'm not straight away, though we can give solutions. See, we can be very bright and intelligent in terms of all the possibilities, but we have to be sensitive. See what best we can uh, do with the, the uh, material. So you feel that, that there, are, there are properties that can be better utilized in other sectors. Is that yeah, what it is? I, I, I suppose so. Okay. That's why I am looking for people who can try to give us some insight into those areas. And then yeah. if nothing comes up, then we have the solution. That's not a problem. Uh, anu Anujna has a question for you. She's the one who was making the pond liner. She's an artist. Yeah. Anujna, would you like to speak? Yeah, I don't mind. Yeah. So, Yogananji, I had a question for you, which was, yeah. I think, is why you are saying that this is not the best use of clay you can think of, but just confirm if I'm correct. What do you think is the uh, role clay is playing in this stabilized adobe block? What is it bringing into see, the block? See, most of the adobe, wherever it is being made, universally throughout the world, they use soil which has clay. It is just a question of how much percentage of clay is there, that's all. Sometimes 30% clay is there. Uh, many times, we use black cotton soil and make excellent adobe blocks. So clay definitely plays a role here. Uh, otherwise, if it is only silt and sand, there is nothing cohesive. It, it has to be plastic. But more clay is a problem for us. So that's why we dilute the clay, reduce it by adding sand-like material, and then handle it. That's why you see that 1 is to 5. Um, Hans also has a comment here. Hans, would you like to speak? Yeah, hello. Yes. Um, in my in my understanding, so we are, we are talking about uh, recycling circles of clay. So in my understanding, the clay is lost for the recycling circle if cement is added. It's right. Well, uh, that is one way to look at it, but uh, what you need is, what is your expectation if you want to make a masonry unit? So it all depends on 
what is the standard? Do we need wet strength? If you don't need wet strength, if you need only dry strength, you can. You don't have to use uh, cement at all. Uh, if your expectation is just it being stable, one can also use small quantities of lime and make it, but you can't expect wet strength from that. Uh, did I understand your question correct, Hans, that you're saying that once you add cement to the block, you cannot uh, recuperate the clay again to recycle yeah. it again? Is that yeah, the question? Yeah, yeah. I think yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. Question. Right. But uh, what I can probably tell you is uh, that uh, we, most of the buildings are getting demolished, if you observe. All the demolished waste can be recycled back into a new building. This is what we have been doing. Building gets demolished. Recycle it back into the new building. You don't depend on the uh, you know natural resources again. So there is no problem uh, with the issue of clay there. Because we need materials. Stress on the natural resources can come down. Buildings become resources for the future buildings. This is what probably is going to happen in the, in the future also. Urvi also has a couple of questions. Urvi, would you like to speak? So I'm just curious to know uh, about the, like if the if these stabilized adobe blocks can also be reusable and if the lime and cement, like if the lime is acidic in nature. See, uh, what I can tell you is reinforced concrete. It is just a question of process. You know, a lot of buildings are getting demolished. Pune also, the same thing may be happening. After 25 years, the construction they find it unsuitable. The next generation, they bring it down with their land issue, land prices have gone up or, or for some reason. All that whatever is uh, demolished, it's a question of processing it and you can have fine and coarse aggregate from that and recycle it back into the new building. All that is possible, whether it is concrete, whether it is, uh, uh, you know, any other material, brick, a monitor, plaster, everything can be recycled back. Um, Yoganandji, you know, in this particular festival, there is another, like the first material that was problematic was plaster of Paris, you know, and the whole uh, reason of banning plaster of Paris and then encouraging clay was because plaster of Paris did not have any solution. And uh, every year I do visit the quarries and, you know, where the landfill, where these materials and the idols are dumped in Pune city. And you are talking about, you know, several hundred tons of, of plaster of Paris and uh, in a smaller quantity clay also. So um, you are saying that when we, if we start thinking in terms of taking construction uh, waste and, you know, debris and recycling, um, and how does one actually start separating these? Because each of these materials require a different treatment, right? So if supposing now we have uh, a scientist in Pune who says he can actually con show us how to recycle the plaster of Paris also. Uh, and then we have clay that we are trying to recycle. And then there's all the construction waste. So uh, do you just end up mixing everything up and seeing, uh, looking at that? Or how do you separate everything out and do treat it differently? Yeah, uh, see, that's why our testing lab is the heart of our activity. So we test every material which comes to us. Sometimes, you know, paper, pulp and soil has been mixed to make stabilized adobe. Uh, you know, uh, lamp uh, shades have been done. We have been involved in several such activities wherein soil is mixed with some other material and we can uh, utilize it in the best way depending on the requirement so our laboratory is the thing which helps us to understand and take it forward so we are open to testing and see what best can be done wonderful we also have another architect here dhara uh, maybe you have heard of her yokananda ji dhara has been working with uh, upcycling of uh, containers you know large uh, shipping containers and she has been associated with us. Dhara, would you like to say something? Any questions or any thoughts? Hi, everyone. Hello. Uh, no, I'm really amazed. I mean, I'm really here to see. I mean, I think uh, when Manisha collected first batch came to me and I was not able, I mean, we did make the powder. Uh, all the first steps which everybody has done 
till there we were, but I'm really glad to see a lot of approaches which are there. And uh, I definitely agree with you that uh, anything can be recycled and put it back. It's just there are processes available, but what you said was so right that where it is actually supposed to go there. Exactly. It's not that we should put everything everywhere. Exactly. Uh, that is where we have been also trying to focus. And the one other thing, I mean, I mean, I'll just take a minute, but other thing which also Shishan said, which I would like to like repeat it when these things come up is uh, <clears throat> like to get it into mass production, this recycling, I mean, it works, but every time what comes has a different, slightly different uh, uh, property because of the mixing, because it is recycled, the things that coming has a different proportions and different properties to give a one solution has been challenging. I mean, this is what we feel in whatever work that we have been doing. So some, whoever is coming up with ideas, that can be the highlight point to start with. That every time something, like you did test, right? Because of your life, laboratory, you could test what is the composition of this clay and what is the mixture. And then you have to be very precise to come up with a solution. Now, uh, when, uh, let's say, someone is setting up something, then every time that incoming material needs to be tested because it comes different every time. This is the challenge I feel when we are trying to re. Um... Yeah, uh, I agree with you, but uh, these challenges have never been a problem to us. And uh, right. some or the other people are willing to take it forward with a take better it. understanding. So, with the experience, you know, they gain the understanding because even burn brick manufacturing is from right. Harappa and Manjadaro, but it is it's still going on. You know, uh, yeah. people are learning. So that learning continues, that is never ending. But uh, what, what I feel is, you know, we engineer problems and then find solutions for it. We are the culprits. We have created a lot of problems and so. we want to find solutions for the problems. But the root cause, I understand, probably there can be a better uh, way to handle these things. Why we are... Yeah, I mean, application has to be checked where to put that. Yeah. That's all, Manisha. I mean, I think I'm really glad to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you. Wonderful for an uh, thank you for an excellent presentation, Yoganandaji. I'm so happy that we could have had this conversation.